Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today I'm going to attempt to comprehensively explore modern methods of deterring insect bites. So we're going to be looking at insecticides and insect repellents options which are of a more modern nature and some natural alternatives will be discussed also. So stay tuned. I will humbly ask if you do enjoy the video, please click like, comment, subscribe. Thanks. Enjoy the show. Alright guys, so I want to provide my rationale for why I believe that insect repellency is so important to preparedness. And basically there's a variety of reasons and I'm just going to quickly go over them here. So number one is that obviously insects are a major nuisance. If you're wasting your time swatting flies and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to focus and pay attention to what it is that you're doing. Also, they are a potential vector for the spread of numerous pathogens. Thirdly, this domesticated notion of remaining indoors for the majority of the day is not something that would be enjoyed in a post-disaster scenario. Obviously, you're going to be outside doing a lot of stuff, so it's not you're not going to have that luxury of spending the majority of your time indoors as we do today. In the old days, people didn't do that because obviously they were outside working most of the time. So the inevitable lowering of the standard of living is going to see people spending a lot more time outside, meaning that you're going to be exposed to a lot more of the natural elements. Fourthly, the public pest control systems are no longer going to be operational. As a result, the bugs are probably going to return with a bang. Number five, it's especially important from a tactical perspective, or if you're just hunting, that you're that you're not only able to maintain stealth but you're able to take a steady shot without giving away your location because you had to swat a fly off your face or frantically scurrying about in the bushes also they're going to make excellent barter options because a lot of people are not accustomed to a world without bugs they're going to want some sort of insect repellents. It's going to be high up there on the prize commodities list. That's my rationale for why insect repellents and deterrents should be a major part of your preparedness planning. So I'm going to link a video here, which is just a clip from the Discovery Channel TV show Naked and Afraid. And it shows a couple who's struggling with some mosquitoes in the Amazon rainforest. Just to give you an understanding of what it is I'm talking about for some of you who've never spent a lot of time outside the cities or in places with large amount of nuisance pests such as those. In Canada, I can tell you that if they were to attempt this in some of the places in northern Canada, they would be devoured within two hours. So as bad as it is in the Amazon rainforest, it's probably a lot worse up here in the sticks in the northern boreal forest. So there's two main classes of insect deterrents that I'm going to be talking about today. One are insecticides and the other are repellents. And some of those are ones that you apply to your skin and some of those are area dispersants as you can see here. And I'm going to be talking about both. So first off, let's start with the insecticides. So, so obviously an insecticide kills mosquitoes and various flies. And the active ingredient here is pyrethrins. As you can see there, it's 0.176%. So this is definitely going to kill the buggers. And you can spray this stuff basically in the backyard or something. And it should give you a little bit of protection. Of course, you can't help the bugs that are going to come over the fence. So something like this would be good for fumigation purposes. In a similar note, you can use mosquito sticks or coils, which have the active ingredient alethrin, which is also a insecticide. So this is actually going to kill mosquitoes. And once again, if you are fumigating a place, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, nobody is in the place while you're doing it. You're not going to die, but it could compound in your system. And also there's the mosquito coils, which, coils, which are pretty cheap. Now for $2 for what these do, I think it's an amazing price because you get 10 of these coils. They all last six hours. And really, if you just break a piece off that coil, stick it in the ground, it's going to be enough to fumigate a small room in about 10 minutes so it's going to kill all the bugs in there in a very short period of time so this could potentially last a very long time depending on how much time you're spending out in the sticks so they are going to have a limited range and they're going to be subject to wind now there's another chemical that i don't show here and it's called permethrin and it's made by a company named sawyer i'll post a link and an image to it and basically this is only for use on clothing tents and gear 
So this is actually an insecticide and it's also a repellent, so it is going to kill them. So you're not supposed to apply this to your skin, but it's something that can be used as a DEET alternative if you're hypersensitive to DEET and you can't use it for whatever reason. Permethrin is possibly an option that you can use. It's not going to eat away at your clothes and your gear. Unlike some higher concentrations of DEET, which I'm going to talk about, when you get into the 50% and above DEET concentrations, you're looking at corrosiveness uh, for various plastics and synthetic fabrics. So I'm not really going to talk too much about citronella. It's currently rated as an E-class insect deterrent in contrast to DEET, which is an A-class. So citronella is only going to be marginally effective. And basically the scent of it is just kind of a nice scent which confuses the insect. So it's probably not that much more effective than any other scented stuff. Now on to the most commonly known about insect repellent, of course, is DEET. And DEET comes in a variety of functions. It comes in these aerosol containers. It also comes in non-aerosol in cream form, lotion form. It comes in wipes. So there's a lot of different options for DEET that you can get on the market. And it's probably the one that's proven to be most effective. It was invented for the military in World War II. It became available for civilian use in the 1950s, and since that time, it's pretty much been the industry standard for insect repellency. It actually does work. I can attest to how well it works in the most infested of situations. There was times when I would tree plant where I could basically scoop the air with my hand and pull out 10 different species of insect. It was that bad, and I'm not exaggerating at all. And if it wasn't for DEET, I probably would have went crazy. So... I OD'd a lot. It probably had some compounding toxic effects on my system. Nonetheless, it was sure better than going crazy and running off the chopping block. Now, the great thing about DEET is its shelf life. So DEET is very stable and it's effective indefinitely as a repellent. And for that reason, the federal government doesn't require any sort of expiration dates to be put on the products. Now, manufacturers do claim that the appearance feel and smell of their products may change after about three years and that's because some of the other chemicals that are mixed in there with the DEET are not as stable but the DEET itself will last indefinitely. So that's why it makes a great barter tool in itself for many many years to come. A great substitute for DEET which is not commonly known about is called picaridin. So a company named Sawyer makes a picaridin repellent that will not harm your gear or equipment. It's virtually odorless so it has a very mild citrus scent, but it's going to be as effective as repelling flies as DEET. And basically, it's effective up to 14 hours. Um, it was invented by Bayer in the 1980s, and studies have shown that it is actually as effective as DEET. So those of you who are allergic to the DEET compound, then that might be a good substitute for you. And I'll post a link to that here. Now, for all of you people who don't like chemicals too much, you can explore oil of lemon eucalyptus compounds, which have been proven to be effective in deterring insect bites. And they, this uh, Natropel stuff will actually work at repelling mosquitoes for six hours. Would I trust it as well as DEET in the deep sticks? Not likely. But it has been proven to be effective. So this may actually cause skin irritation if you apply too much of it. So it is still concentrated you know as natural as it is it's a concentrated form of natural so concentrated form of natural just like refined sugar type thing so it's not really that great in large amounts but nonetheless it is a natural substitute so if those of you who have chemical sensitivities uh, this would be something for you to explore it might actually be effective for you now there's a new class of insect repellents which require a source of energy to power them and basically their area dispersants so things like this clip-on off system here uses basically as its base a chemical called metafluthrin and it's going to kill and repel mosquitoes and basically how it works is there's a battery in here there's a little fan there you stick a cartridge in there and it disperses this chemical which kills and deters insects it's going to have a limited range and honestly i wouldn't trust this in the sticks the, the bugs are probably going to uh, bite you before they die or something to that effect it's just you know it's totally dependent on the direction of the wind and 
So if you were in a very calm place and you wanted to plug this in by your campfire or something like that, that could work, you know. But uh, typically this is for soccer moms and things like that when you're out in the park with the kids and, you know, there's maybe just not too many bugs around but a few. But I wouldn't trust this in the deep woods. But it might be a good comfort item to have just for those uh, picnics and whatnot. Now the more serious area repellent alternative is the Thermocell uh, Mosquito Area Repellent. The Prepared Mind 101 did a review on this and uh, I asked him, you know, if he really thought that it was going to work and hold up in the deep sticks and he did and apparently a lot of people have had good results with this. Now this uses the same chemical that is in the mosquito stick so it uses alithrin and basically that's uh, an insecticide so it's going to not only deter mosquitoes but it's going to kill them. Now this takes a butane cartridge, it sticks in there and you can buy these cartridges. So obviously the first thing a prepper is going to notice with these energy based options is that yeah it's going to require a source of energy. So as preppers we always frown on that because we want something that's solid state, we want something that's going to be standalone but then again this is an interesting piece of technology and it's great for hunters who are trying to mask their scents because this is not going to have a very strong scent to it and even just from a tactical perspective uh, this might be a really good thing to have on you if you're in the deep sticks and there's a lot of bugs and you find yourself in a gunfight heaven forbid this is going to help you to kind of keep your composure under those conditions so I believe that this retails for about $50 and then of course you have to buy a refill. So a little pricey only for those upscale hunters and whatnot. Not that I'm one of them, but I certainly like my gear and I am a gear junkie. So just to give you an example of how this works, the butane heats the grill and there's a little cartridge there that has a lethrin and it's, it's atomized by the, uh, by the heat of the grill and so it emits the substance and it should give you cover for an area of about 5 to 10 meters. That of course depends on the amount of wind. Now for people who don't want to use any chemicals, there is the option of utilizing some sort of screen protection. And they are effective. I've used them successfully throughout my tree planting career. And this is a newer one that I got a few years back and it's called the Original Bug Shirt. I'll model it for you here. And basically it's going to give you full scale protection of your upper body anyways. Usually your lower body is pretty good if you're wearing a heavier duty pant, a loose fitting pant of course so that the skin is not touching the clothing because bugs can bite through pretty much anything especially the horse flies. So you're going to definitely want some protection. So I'll model this for you here and show you this real quick. So there is substitutes and alternatives for people who don't want to use chemicals that are effective. Of course your vision is going to be obscured by the, by the screen and your range of motion and just your general abilities are going to be impeded a bit if you're wearing this kind of stuff. So something to keep in mind. Alright guys, so I hope that was a useful presentation for you today. And keep in mind there are some natural alternatives, but none of which are proven to work as well as the items that you've seen here. Although I enjoy natural alternatives and am a traditionalist in some respects, the fact is nothing works like the modern technology you see here to repel insects and kill them. So in subsequent videos, I might talk about more localized pest infestations and pest control. So let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. So I look forward to reading your comments about what you have found might work as a form of insect deterrent if there's something that I've missed or if there's other things that are equally effective that I don't know about, or perhaps there's some new technology out there that I haven't been privy to yet. So let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.